Okay, good morning dear students of IT6256, IT Application Tools in Business. I am Ms. Karen Vidalara, your OLC from AMA East Rizal. So last meeting, we have discussed the following introduction to data communication, components of data communication, different data flow directions, types of signals to transfer data, types of transmission media, devices used in networking, the various network topologies, and kinds of networks. So today, we will be discussing what is internet, a brief history of internet, what is a web, various uses of internet, types of internet service, what is a cloud, what is a web app, using a web browser and understanding URLs. So let us first define what is the internet. So the internet is the worldwide network of networks that links millions of computers together via copper wires, fiber optic cables, wireless connections, and other telecommunications channels. This publicly accessible network of interconnected computer networks communicate using a set of protocols and standards, the most basic of which are TCP IP or Transmission Control Protocol and Internet Protocol. The internet is a global network of billions of computers and other electronic devices. With the internet, it's possible to access almost any information communicate with anyone else in the world and do much more. So brief history of the internet. The internet started out as a US Department of Defense project called ARPANET, which slowly expanded with the integration of packet switching networks over circuit switching networks. ARPANET could be considered the original heart of the internet with additional bits and pieces being added on until certain standards were needed to unify them all. These standards eventually came to be known as protocols. As of July 2008, there were close to 600 million hosts connected to the World Wide Web, linked together by a series of switches and communication links. So what is a web? So the World Wide Web, usually called the web for short, is a collection of different websites you can access through the internet. A website is made up of related text, images, and other resources. Websites can resemble other forms of media like newspaper articles or television programs, or they can be interactive in a way that's unique to computers. Once you are connected to the internet, you can access and view websites using a type of application called a web browser. So what can you do online? With billions of websites online today, there is a lot of information on the internet. Search engines made this information easier to find. All you have to do is type one or more keywords and the search engine will look for relevant websites. So we can find information online. So using our search engine. Next, we have also email, short for electronic mail. Email is a way to send and receive messages across the internet. Almost everyone who uses the internet has their own email account, usually called an email address. This is because you'll need an email address to do just about anything online, from online banking to creating a Facebook account. Next, we have the uh, social networking. Social networking websites are another way to connect and share with your family and friends online. Rather than sharing with just a few people over email, social networks make it easier to connect and share with many people at the same time. Facebook is the world's largest social networking site with more than 1 billion users worldwide. Next, we also have chat and instant messaging or IM. Our short messages sent and read in real time allowing you to converse more quickly and easily than email. These are generally used when both people are online, so your message can be read immediately. 
By comparison, emails won't be seen until recipients check their inboxes. Examples of instant messaging applications include the Yahoo Messenger and Google Hangouts. Some sites like Gmail and Facebook even allow you to chat within your web browser. So next we have the online media. There are many sites that allow you to watch videos and listen to music. For example, you can watch millions of videos on YouTube or listen to internet radio on Pandora. Other services like Netflix and Hulu allow you to watch movies and TV shows. And if you have a set-top streaming box, you can even watch them directly on your television instead of a computer screen. Next, everyday tasks. You can also use the internet to complete many everyday tasks and errands. For example, you can manage your bank account, pay your bills, and shop for just about anything like Shopee and Lazada. So the main advantage here is convenience. Rather than going from place to place, you can do all these tasks at home. Once you've set up your computer, you may want to purchase home internet access so you can send and receive email, browse the web, stream videos, and more. You may even set up a home wireless network commonly known as Wi-Fi so you can connect multiple devices to the internet at the same time. So these are some of the types of internet service. We have the dial-up. This is generally the slowest type of internet connection, and you should probably avoid it unless it is the only service available in your area. Dial-up internet uses your phone lines, so unless you have multiple phone lines, you will not be able to use your landline and the internet at the same time. Next, we have the DSL. DSL service uses a broadband connection, which make it much faster than dial-up. DSL connects to the internet via a phone line, but does not require you to have a landline at home. And unlike dial-up, you'll be able to see or use the internet and your phone line at the same time. Next, we have the cable. Cable service connects to the internet via cable TV. Although you do not necessarily need to have cable TV in order to get it. It uses a broadband connection and can be faster than both dial-up and DSL service. However, it is only available where cable TV is available. Next, we have the satellite. A satellite connection uses broadband but does not require cable or phone lines. It connects to the internet through satellites orbiting the Earth. As a result, it can be used almost anywhere in the world, but the connection may be affected by weather patterns. Satellite connections are also usually slower than DSL or cable. Next, we have the 3G and 4G. 3G and 4G service is most commonly used with mobile phones and it connects wirelessly through your ISP or Internet Service Providers Network. However, these types of connections aren't always as fast as DSL or cable. They will also limit the amount of data you can use each month, which isn't the case with most uh, broadband plans. Now that you know about the different types of internet service, you can do some research to find out what ISPs are available in your area. Most ISPs offer several tiers of service with different internet speeds, usually measured in Mbps or megabits per second. You also want to consider the cost of the service, including installation charges and monthly fees. Although dial-up has traditionally been the least expensive option, many ISPs have raised dial-up prices to be the same as broadband. That is intended to encourage people to switch to broadband. So here are some of the um, hardware needed. So we have the modem. The type of internet access you choose will determine the type of modem you need. Dial-up access uses a telephone modem. DSL service uses a DSL modem. 
cable access uses a cable modem and satellite service uses a satellite adapter. Your ISP may give you a modem, often for a free, when you sign a contract which helps ensure that you have the right type of modem. However, if you would prefer to shop for a better or less exp expensive modem, you can choose to buy one separately. Another hardware needed is the router. A router is a hardware device that allows you to connect several computers and other devices to a single internet connection, which is known as a home network. Many routers are wireless, which allows you to create a home wireless network commonly known as Wi-Fi network. You don't necessarily need to buy a router to connect to the internet. It's possible to connect your computer directly to your modem using an Ethernet cable. Also, many modems include a built-in router. So you have the option of creating a Wi-Fi network without buying extra hardware. Next, let's define what is the cloud. So the cloud is the internet, more specifically. It's all of the things you can access remotely over the internet. When something is in the cloud, it means it's stored on internet servers instead of your computer's hard drive. Why use the cloud? Some of the main reasons to use the cloud are convenience and reliability. For example, if you're ever used a web-based email service such as Gmail or Yahoo Mail, you've already used the cloud. All of the emails in a web-based service are stored on servers rather than on your computer's hard drive. This means you can access your email from any computer with an internet connection. It also means you'll be able to recover your emails if something happens to your computer. So these are the common reasons why we are going to use the cloud. The first reason is the file storage. You can store all types of information in the cloud, including files and email. This means you can access these things from any computer or mobile device with an internet connection, not just your home computer. Dropbox and Google Drive are some of the most popular cloud-based storage services. Next, we also have file sharing. The clouds make it easy to share files with several people at the same time. For example, you could upload several photos to a cloud-based photo service like Flickr or iCloud Photos, and this uh, quickly share them with friends and family. Next, we have backing up data. You can also use the cloud to protect your files. Apps like Mozi and Carbonite automatically back up your data to the cloud. This way, if your computer ever is lost, stolen or damaged, you'll still be able to recover these files from the cloud. Now let's proceed with defining what is a web app or web application. An application software that runs on a web server, unlike computer-based software programs that are stored locally on the operating system of the device. Web applications are accessed by the user through a web browser with an active internet connection. These applications are programmed using a client-server model structure. The user or client is provided services through an off-site server that is hosted by a third party. Examples of commonly used web applications include webmail, online retail sales, online banking, and online auctions. So some popular web apps. So we have Facebook. It lets you create an online profile and interact with your friends. Profiles and conversations can be updated at any time. So Facebook uses web app technologies to keep the information up to date. Next, we also have the Pixlr. It is an image editing application that runs in your web browser. Much like Adobe Photoshop, it includes many advanced features like um, color correction and sharpening tools. Next, we have the Google Docs. It is an office package that runs in your browser. 
much like Microsoft Office. You can use it to create documents, spreadsheets, presentations, and more. And because the files are stored in the cloud, it's easy to share them with others. So there are also web applications that run in the cloud and do not need to be installed on your computer. So next, let's proceed with using a web browser. A web browser is a type of software that allows you to find and view websites on the internet. A web browser, commonly referred to as a browser, is a software application for accessing information on the World Wide Web. When a user requests a web page from a particular website, the web browser retrieves the necessary content from a web server and then displays the page on the user's device. A web browser is not the same thing as a search engine, though the two are often confused. For a user, a search engine is just a website that provides links to other websites. However, to connect to a website's server and display its web pages, a user must have a web browser installed. There are many different web browsers, but some of the most common ones include, we have the Google Chrome, the Internet Explorer, the Safari, the Microsoft Edge, and the Mozilla Firefox. So most browsers have this user interface features. So we have allow the user to open multiple pages at the same time, either in different browser windows or in different tabs of the same window. Uh, back and forward buttons to go back to the previous page visited or forward to the next one. A refresh or reload button to reload the current page. A stop button to cancel loading the page. In some browsers, the stop button is merged with the reload button. We also have a home button to return to the user's home page. An address bar to input the URL of a page and display it. And then a search bar to input terms into a search engine. In some browsers, the search bar is merged with the address bar. So we have the URLs and the address bar. So each website has a unique address called a URL, short for Uniform Resource Locator. It's like a street address that tells your browser where to go on the internet. When you type a URL into the browser's address, address bar and press enter on your keyboard, the browser will load the page associated with that URL. So in this example, we have www.bbc.com slash travel. Next, we also have the links. Whenever you see a word or phrase on a website that's blue or underlined in blue, it's probably a hyperlink or link for short. Links are used to navigate the web. When you click a link, it will usually take you to a different web page. You may also notice that your cursor changes into a hand icon whenever you hover over a link. So in this example, we have uh, a link like culture and identity, food and hospitality, adventure and experience, and destinations. So this one is our hand icon. Next, we also have the navigation buttons. The back and forward buttons allow you to move through websites you've recently viewed. You can also click and hold either button to see your recent history. So this is our back and forward, back and forward button. Next, the refresh button. This button will reload the current page. If a website stops working, try using this button. So this one is our refresh button. Next, we have the tabbed browsing. Many browsers allow you to open links in a new tab. You can open as many links as you want and they'll stay in the same browser window instead of cluttering your screen without multiple windows. To open a link in a new tab, click uh, right-click the link and select open link in a new tab. The exact wording may vary from browser to browser. Next. 
X. To close the tab, click the X. And then to create a new blank tab, click the button to the right of any open tabs. So this is our plus sign in order for us to click a new tab. Next, bookmarks and history. If you find a website you want to view later, it can be hard to memorize the exact web address. Bookmarks, also known as favorites, are a great way to save and organize specific websites so you can revisit them again and again. Simply locate and select the star icon to bookmark the current website. Your browser will also keep a history of every site you visit. This is another good way to find a site you visited previously. To view your history, open your browser settings, usually by clicking the icon in the upper right corner and select history. So every time you click a link on a website or type a web address into your browser, it's a URL, which stands for Uniform Resource Locator. Think of it like a street address with each portion of the URL as different parts of the address and each giving you a different information. So we have the scheme. Every URL begins with a scheme. This tells your browser what type of address it is, so the browser connects to it correctly. There are many different types of scheme, but for typical web browsing, you will mostly use uh, HTTP and HTTPS. Your browser usually won't show the scheme in the address bar, and usually you don't need to type the scheme when typing a web address. Instead, you can just begin with the domain name. The scheme is still always part of the URL. It's just isn't being displayed. So in this example, we have our scheme HTTP. Next, we have the domain name. The domain name is the most prominent part of a web address. Typically, different pages on the same site will continue to use the same domain name. For example, all pages on this site share the gcflearnfree.org domain name. Each segment of the domain name separated by a period is called a domain. The domain on the right is called a top-level domain. Then with the domain to the left of it called the second-level domain, then third-level domain, and so on. So in this example, we have www.gcflearnfree.org. www is our SEB domain. GCF Learn Free is our second level, and org is our top level. So aside from .org, we also have the .com, .edu, we have the .gov. So next we have the file path. The file path, often just called the path, tells your browser to load a specific page. If you don't specify a path and only enter a domain name, your browser is still loading a specific page. It's just loading a default page, which usually will help you to navigate to other pages. So this is an example of a file path. So we have reading slash grammar slash done dash or dash then. Okay. Next, we have the parameters. Some URLs include a string of characters after the path, beginning with a question mark called the parameter, parameter string. You have probably noticed this part of a URL appear in your address bar after performing a search on Google or YouTube. The parameter string can be clear or confusing to a human user, but it is critical information for the server. So this is an example of a parameters. Next, we have the anchor. Also appearing after the path is the anchor, which tells your browser to scroll to or load a specific part of the page. Usually, the anchor begins with a hashtag and is used to direct your browser to a specific part of a very long page, much like a bookmark. Different anchors don't load different pages. They simply tell the browser to display different parts of the pages. 
Okay, so now let's sum up what uh, we have discussed today. So we have identified the definition of an internet, which is known as the network of networks. Then we also discuss the brief history of the internet. Then we have defined what is a web or a website. Then what are the things that we can do online? So we have finding information online, um, email, social networking, chat and instant messaging, online media, and our everyday tasks. Then we uh, discuss also the different types of internet service like dial-up, DSL, cable, satellite, 3G, and 4G. Then the hardware needed. So we have the modem and the router. Then we also define what is a cloud and why do we have to use the cloud. So we have two main reasons why we are going to use the cloud for our convenience and reliability. Then the common reasons to use the cloud. So we have the file storage, file sharing, and backing up data. Then we also define what is a web app or what is a web application. Then some popular web apps. So we have the Facebook, Pixlr, Google Docs. And then uh, why do we have to use a web browser? Then we also uh, feature some uh, um, some features of the user interface of a web browser. So we have the URLs in the address bar, the links, the navigation buttons like back and forward. We also have the refresh button, the tab browsing, how to close a tab and how to create a new blank tab, then bookmarks and history. And then um, the scheme which uh, always begins with uh, HTTP or HTTPS. Then the domain name. Then we have the uh, top level domain, the second level domain, and the third level domain. Then the file path or path. Then the parameters, the anchor, okay. So if you have any questions, please send a message through the LMS chat box or email me at kvdalara at amaes.edu.ph. So um, thank you for attending this virtual class. Thank you for listening. So do you have any questions so far? I will be posting this uh, lecture and this notes in the uh, LMS announcement uh, board. So do you have any questions so far? You can uh, write down your questions in the Zoom chat box if you have any questions or if you have any concerns.